I'm just going to run through all the latest transfer news for Manchester United. According to Fabius Romano in an interview today, he talked about all the latest news concerning Manchester United from transfer in and transfer out, and also some bits about Eric Ten Hag. But what he said about Eric Ten Hag was that um, Eric Ten Hag is not going to be sacked um, before the end of the season, like I said before in my earlier video. And also, Bayern Munich's interest in Eric Ten Hag is not really concrete. There are some figures at the club that are fans of him, and they are informed on him and various other managers, but the timing is an issue. Why is the timing an issue? Um, because Bayern want to announce a new manager in the coming days, which could make anything involving Eric Ten Hag difficult, as he's not listening to outside interests at the moment, while the season is ongoing. So Bayern wants to get a new manager in the coming days, and Eric Ten Hag will not, is not in the mood, is not going to listen to any negotiations from any other clubs, until after the end of the season, which is until after the FA Cup in three weeks time. In three weeks time, so obviously he can't speak to Bayern. Bayern, even if he gets sacked in in three weeks time, he can't speak to anybody because he wants to focus on on United. And of course, he could be if he's sacked in three weeks time, Bayern will will already have announced a new manager, and then he can't go to Bayern Munich. So that's that for that. And also, um, as of today, the seventh of May, twenty twenty four. According to Fabrizio Romano, he says, Ineos have not made any concrete talks with any other manager. Does that mean Ten Hag is going to stay or will he go? Let's see. It's not our decision to make. It's down to um, the Ineos group. But of course, anything can change any, anytime. Tomorrow we can get a new saying, managers are, are, are talking to a new manager. We don't know what will happen. And also from Fabrizio Romano, he said, Thomas Tuchel wants to return to Premier League and would be open to join United should Eric Ten Hag leave, despite the possibility of no European football. Why? Oh yeah. So yeah, Tomasuku, we all know that he wants to, he's so interested in United, he's very, very interested, he wants to come to United, he has been putting it out over the weeks from three agents that he wants to come to United, but does that mean he will come? No. Well, um, uh, the Union's group talking to Tuchel? No. So, that's that for that. He wants to come, if we start Ten Hag, he will be one of the uh, front runners for the job, but, as of now, no talks about a new manager, so we need, we need to first talk about that. So down to transfer news. He said, why we have to be realistic, there will be big changes at United. Of course, there are already big changes with in the top management. We have a new CEO. We have a new um, technical director. We are getting a new um, sporting director in the Nash World, who is not yet, who is not yet here. Our new CEO is going to start in July. But now we have an interim CEO in Jean Cloud Braun. Who is um, part of the Ineos Group? He holds is he's like the, I think he's the CEO of the Ineos Group in, in terms of India food uh, Ineos Group football or something like that. He's, he's the CEO there, but now he's, got, he's just going to be the interim CEO from now until July when Omar Barada, our new CEO, is going to take over. So I think the Fabrizio Romano he also said Jason Wilcox, who is our technical director, will have a big role this summer in terms of outgoings, incomings. Handling players in the last year of their contract, etc. Of course, Dana Short is not yet here, so um, Jason Wilcox had to step up and, and take charge of those responsibilities alongside the interim CEO in Jean Cloud Blanc. So let's see what happens with that. We are, I'm very, very excited to see what being run by top people feels like. And um, he said, United will adopt a much different approach this summer compared to recent years. Where we wait too long for other clubs to make moves and end up panic buying late on. Oh my god. Every summer transfer window, my United are very, very slow. We are like snails in terms of signing players. We all know how it took us a hundred days to try to sign their young and we didn't do that. How United can never sign a player in, um, in June. We always said I was signing in July. How it takes us almost three weeks to get one transfer done, or a month to get one transfer done. How we rarely sell players. Last season, we only sell, sold Fred. Last season, we sold we sold only James Garner. Imagine, for 12 million or 10 million pounds. Then last season, we sold uh, Fred for how much? Was it less than 10 million too? So in the last two years, we have realistically only sold two players. Shameful. That's, that's, that, that, that's shameful. Like, so... According to what Fabio is saying, um, it means our transfers are going to be a lot faster. We're going to be a lot more efficient in the transfer market. We are not going to be taking for for fools. We're not going to be paying stupid wages. We're not going to be paying stupid transfer fees. 
and we're going to be getting things fast and you know on point and of course that also means trying to get as much players in before the u.s tour because we find that our new signings don't go to, don't go on tour and we need those signings to blend with the squad early on so we need to sign that we need to sign those important players before we go on tour in july so june should be a very 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 active month for uh, for Manchester United. Next month should be a very active month for us. And also, I'm um, going to outgoings now. We said at the moment everything is quiet around Anthony and potential outgoings. Ineos regard him as a very talented player despite a bad season. I know many players, many fans want Anthony to leave the club. Um, but come on, we send this guy for one hundred million. How exactly are we going to sell him? Who exactly is going to take him on loan? I don't think Anthony is going to go anywhere. I think Anthony is going to stay. I don't know this thing about Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. I think Anthony is going to stay. Sancho, maybe will be sold. We'll get, the, we'll get if, there was, if there's an update on Sancho here from Fabrizio Romano. But Sancho should be sold or might go on another loan. But Anthony, I don't see Anthony going anywhere. But let's see what, I don't know. We'll get more clarity in the coming weeks, like he said. So, um, in terms of incomings, exciting news. Michael Olise. Michael Olise, Michael Olise, who screwed us yesterday, who screwed us bad yesterday, um, he said concrete talks regarding a possible deal from Michael Olise is expect, are expected to take place in the coming weeks. Of course, we know that he has a release cost of around 60 million pounds or so. Um, he's, he's placed on the left wing. Um, he trusts us. He, he, he totally screwed us yesterday. We have always been interested in him for a very long time. He's interested in coming to United. Chelsea are also interested in him. Uh, but also, uh, we are like the front runners because he's very interested in coming to United. He was in, he, according to reports, he's a United player when he was, he, he has been a United fan since when he was a child. And yes, Fabrizio Omano has always said that we are, we always have no concrete interest in him and he wants to come. So if the talks push on in the coming weeks, I think we'll get it done. I think he might be a first signing. And, uh, He's, I don't know, he's, I think he's 22 or 21 years old or 23 years, either 22, 22, 21, 22 or 23 years old. I don't know which of the, which of them. Uh, but of course, he's a very talented player. He's an English player. Is, is he English? I think he's, he's a French, a French, French, French national. I think he, he plays for the French national team or he's, I think he's eligible to play for the English national team and the French national team. Um, but yes, um, Michael says he's expected to take talks for him is expected to take place in the coming weeks. So down to more news, uh, Fabio Mano said, despite United still discussing the profile of striker they want, it is a concrete possibility that they go for an experienced name up front to provide competition. I think a report from Fabio Mano came out last day before yesterday, I think on Sunday or Monday, that United has spoken to the agent of Yoselu of Real Madrid. I think Yoselu is like 33, 34 years. Uh, who is going to be, who is the striker, who is the, a striker at Real Madrid. I think, I think Fabrizio, he said, um, we have had talks with this agent. So when he says something like, um, that they might go for an experienced name up front to provide competition, that means as Rasmus Holland is 20, we might go for a much, much older, um, much, much older and experienced, um, striker, um, for, instead of going for a much younger one that provide like a real competition for, for, for as much to go for someone that is a much, 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 much older and still very competent, but someone that will, will not really bench, um, as much, or as much, um, like that. Let's see what happens with that. We don't have names for that yet. And on, on outgoings, Casemiro leaving United this summer is a big possibility. This is what Fabrizio Romano is saying. Sadly, Pro League interest is still there. And, uh, honestly, this has been a very shit season for Casemiro. He's supposed to be our, you know, one of our best players, but he has been very poor this season. He started two years. I wouldn't mind if he's sold. We need to raise money. We need to raise money for this transfer, summer transfer. You know, they don't have money. We don't have money to sign players this summer. Like, that's all the truth. We need to sell to buy. And that's the simple truth. Sell as much as possible to buy as many as possible. That should be our motto for this summer transfer window. So according to Fabio Romano, Saudi Pro League interest in Casemiro is very, very much concrete. And let's see what happens with that. We can, maybe we can get him for, we can get like 30 million pounds for Casemiro if he goes to the Saudi pool. Let's see what happens with that also. And also he said, Christian Eriksen will have discussions with Eric Tanak soon. He wants to be a regular player wherever he plays. Come on. Please sell 
Ericsson. Ericsson cannot be a regular player for United. His legs are weak. He cannot defend. Um, he has been, how many games has, has he started this season? Ericsson is done as United and I won't even flinch if he's sold. So we can get like five to ten million for him. Oh well, he can go. So definitely he doesn't have a future at, at this club. So, Christian Ericsson leaving United, no problem. Bye bye. Yeah, I have to be ruthless. I don't really care. If Ericsson wants to leave, he can as well leave. It doesn't really matter. And also, according to Fabrizio Romano, Eduardo Bissaka, Victor Lindelof will consider the opportunities this summer and United will be open to good offers for them. And of course, yes, we are, we should be open to selling these two players because out of Bissaka and Dalo, Dalo is obviously better and Wambisaka has always have interest from Crystal Palace. So maybe we can even do a Crystal Palace um, Olise and Wambisaka deal. Maybe we can do that with them. And for Victor Lindelof, um, I won't, I won't be too mad if he stays. Um, I wonder if Maguire goes, John Evans, uh, Evans will go, um, Varane, I don't know why, why we are allowing Varane to go on a free, but Varane will most likely go because he hasn't signed a new contract up, up until now. And if we're going to sign at least two center back in the summer, so letting Lindelof go, uh, Maguire go, Varane and, and Johnny Evans go and getting two in wouldn't be a bad idea. But if, if, if Lindelof stays, I won't, I won't be mad. I'll be definitely be okay. And as for Wamisaka, we need to raise money. Remember, he's buy to sell, he's a sell to buy. So we need to raise enough money. Wamisaka isn't just what we need at our full back position. Isn't just what we need at the right back. He's not really attacking. He's defensive fine and good, but not really attacking. We need someone like Frimpong who will come in and do a job for us, who can do both and who will challenge Dalo real in real time, not Wamsaka. Wamsaka is not really good enough to challenge Dalo. He's so poor going forward. Even right now, he's playing like he's no longer interested. So Wamsaka is definitely going to go and let's see what offers come for him. As for Nilo Love, we'll also see. And talking about incomings for center back, um, Fabrizio Romano said, Everton's valuation of Gerard Braithwaite is still unknown, but United will make a decision once a price tag, um, is announced. We all know that, um, Brightway, 21 years, Everton, English international, see a young player. Many clubs are coming for him this summer. And um, United are also interested in signing him. Maybe, hopefully he's not our new Maguire. Um, but he's going to cost around 60 to 70 million pounds, which is going to be very expensive. And we also know that we're keeping our eyes on Jean Claude Tudibo, who is still on high on United's list. According to Fabrizio Romano also, he would cost around 40 million pounds and United will look and United will look into the player's demands in terms of a possible deal. Of course, his salary won't be that expensive. So imagine signing Braithwaite for £60 million pounds or £70 million pounds and signing to Tudibo for £40 million. Pounds. That's almost £100 million pounds for two centre-backs. Very, very expensive. So you see, maybe we're not signing Braithwaite. Maybe we might go for Tudibo, who is way cheaper, uh, older, more experienced. Yes, more experienced. Maybe better right now, but Braithwaite could be would end up having a better career than him. We don't know. But it's all about saving money. So I don't know who would go for. One is 40 million pounds. One is 60 million or so 70 million pounds. Maybe we can sign both of them because we definitely need to sign two centre backs in the summer. Also in centre back um 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 targets Fabrizio Mano said Gleson Bremer who is at Juventus is, is a centre back also is expected to be among the names of United list for the summer. Let's see how much it will cost. It might cost, it might not cost more than 50 million pounds. Um, but let's see. There's no really, uh, really concrete, uh, news on Bremer. Of course, we've been linked on Bremer for a long time, but maybe it might be his agent. We don't know. You know, we are Manchester United. We get linked to a lot of players in the summer transfer window. And in, to the news of today, kind of, Fabrizio Romano came out, um, made a post about the president of Gatafi, who said, yes, my United are prepared to sell Mason Greenwood. My United are prepared to sell Mason Greenwood in case they receive a good proposal. He could stay here for one more year. That's as Gaddafi will see. That is this is what um, Angel Torres, the Gaddafi president, Gaddafi president said. He also said, um, no one from Atletico Madrid has asked me about Mason Greenwood. The only one who asked me about the player was Baca president Laporta. And Fabrizio Romano said, Barcelona have already ruled out a deal. Greenwood is not a target. So we all know that lots of clubs are going to be coming in for Mason Greenwood this summer. We all know that 
Juventus are really, really interested in, in Mason Greenwood. Um, of course, also Gaddafi. But Gaddafi are pushing for a loan because they can't afford to buy him. You know, Juventus might be willing to be, uh, bid for him if you can accept something around 20 million, which is very, very small. Come on. Greenwood easily should be costing around 40 million pounds for anybody who's willing to buy him. He has two years left in his contract. Um, if we loan him to Gaddafi, he will have one year left when he's back. Um, after his loan expired, which wouldn't make much sense to sell him when he has one year, one year to go in his contract. The transfer fee will be way lower. So we have to sell him now when he has two years left and he's still, we can get more money for him, um, instead. So let's see who comes in for missing Greenwood. Of course, the possibility of missing Greenwood playing for United is very, very low. It is possible. Um, the Indians group could go against what the former management did, announced and said they were going to try to make him, um, uh, help him progress in his career by moving him somewhere else. Uh, but in Sergi Macliff and every other person can come in and say, no, we want him to stay. That's very possible, but they have, they will definitely be prepared for the backlash that we will get from the fans, rival fans, the English media and everybody. But the, what's happening now, according to Fabrizio Romano, is saying that my United are ready, ready to sell Mason Greenwood. And right here, right now, we haven't really gotten what we need to sell him. We haven't really got a club that's willing to pay us enough money to sell him, but he will cost around 40 million pounds, which makes sense, or 30 million pounds at most. But we need to sell him and raise money to buy players. I just talked about players we need to sign and how much they're going to cost. So we need to sell enough players to buy these players that we are targeting. So on Jaden Sancho, see the same, a similar situation with Jaden Sancho. Um, Dortmund wants to keep him. I think, I think um, Sancho has two or three years left in his contract, but Dortmund wants to keep him. Dortmund cannot pay a transfer fee for him. Dortmund wants him on loan again. And apart from Dortmund, we don't know about any other club who are interested in sending Jaden Sancho. If Ten Hag stays at the as the manager, Jaden Sancho is definitely not, definitely has no future. And even if Ten Hag um, goes, does Sancho wants does Sancho want to remain at the club? He had issues with how the club was run, how the club treated him, treated him apart from Ten Hag. So maybe he still wants to leave. So how are we going to get a transfer fee for for Jaden Sancho? Still another question. So most likely Sancho is going to go, go on loan again. Then Greenwood will be sold. But let's see. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, but um, Sancho right now, still no good offers for him in terms of a transfer fee. Same thing with um, Greenwood. But we could see we could see more activities coming from Greenwood. Greenwood, Greenwood is likely to be sold. So if you're, not, if you're not a Greenwood fan, just know if you're, if you're a Greenwood fan, rather, if you're a Greenwood fan, just know that Greenwood is highly likely to be sold this summer. And for Sancho, probably going to go on loan. But let's see what happens with Jason Wilcox, um, uh, Jean Claude uh, Blanc, and uh, Omar Brada when they all come in. And let's see what we can do in the summer transfer window. It's very exciting. I can't wait for the summer transfer window to start. And let's see how we progress in the Ineos rebuild of Manchester United. I'll see you all later. Don't forget, this is the Hard United. They want to stop for everything Manchester United.